title of today's uh, message is the same as uh, the title of a short video that I published uh, earlier this week. The coming Great Reset. And uh, part of what I say today will be similar, but we will go a bit deeper into uh, this matter. And I, I think that uh, it will be a subject that will uh, return um, in the near future. Um, as of uh, yesterday, uh, we are here in uh, Greece uh, again in uh, full lockdown, meaning that uh, we are basically not allowed to go outside uh, unless uh, it's for uh, one of six reasons that we have to report ahead of time online or through our phones. Uh, so it's quite um, inconvenient and once you do a step outside your door you have to also wear a mask everywhere outside. Um, very inconvenient, and but most of Europe actually is in some sort of lockdown um, and curfews and um, yeah, special measures and, and regulations and limitations above all. And what it does is that it, it makes the people very uncomfortable and it makes life uh, un yeah, uncomfortable. Apart from that, we have to deal with uh, a pandemic or at least a virus infection and um, yeah, whatever you uh, believe of it. Um, there are uh, people uh, seriously uh, ill also uh, near to me, so I know that this is, uh, this is a real problem. Um, there is lots of civil unrest, riots uh, in many places for different reasons. Um, then we have, of course, a looming economic uh, disaster, I can say. Um, there are wars, there are many tensions, um, there is an ever-increasing number of earthquakes. It's a bit underreported, I think, but uh, things are um, shaking everywhere. And we have uh, quite some uh, fireballs, meteorites also. Another thing that is underreported but happening all over the place. And of course, we've seen also in, in the recent days uh, several terror attacks, uh, specifically in uh, France. And, and so I could go on. There are many things happening in this world, and if you all put it all together, and, yeah, you don't feel uh, very happy uh, anymore. And you see that this whole um, world. Societies uh, are, are um, yeah, coming to a halt. It's it's uh, it's getting stuck, and it is in such a situation that it's also becoming irreversible. And what people want from all this is relief, is to, to have it stop, to go back to to normal, uh, to have it reset, and that is. Um, that is what we want. And we want a reset, like you would do on a computer when everything goes wrong. You just turn it off and you turn it on again and you start afresh. This is what the people want. But um, yeah, actually, it's coming. <laughs> the World Economic Forum uh, has um, already uh, talked quite a while ago about what they call the Great Reset. And uh, Klaus Schwab, the um, the founder of the World Economic Forum has also called the COVID-19 um, pandemic uh, a window of opportunity to, to uh, press forward with this great reset. And basically it is projected for the beginning of 2021, uh, somewhere the first quarter, although it might be delayed a bit. Um, it is very convenient and it's the Hegelian dialectic, it's the problem the reaction and here is the solution and the idea of this reset is first of all to, to have it to be an economic reset um, and with that introducing a new digital world currency to, to stop with all the the money that we have all the different currencies and, and to begin with something new and it will be very attractive because people are in Many people are in financial problems due to this whole uh, situation that we are in. Many have lost their jobs uh, or went bankrupt uh, or whatnot. And so um, to have an economic reset would be is very attractive for many people, especially 
if it will involve, and it will, a, a reset of your debt, a cancelling of your debt. It's like sorts of a jubilee uh, that we read of in the Bible, where all the debts are cancelled. Um, it will also involve a health reset, if you will. It's, um, it will be, it will go together with the vaccine that comes and, um, that will uh, incorporate a digital um, passport uh, vaccination certificate, proof that you are vaccinated and you can, uh, with that, again, uh, travel and do other activities uh, without restrictions. And um, life will go back to normal. People will, uh, will accept it with open arms. But that normal... I can tell you, it will not be the normal that we have in our memories, that we had used to know just less than a year ago. It will actually come with a high price. It's going to be new norm, and we are already conditioned for this. We, heard this. we hear this word all the time, the new norm, or the new normal. It will be one with uh, checkpoints, and um, health checks, and uh, credit checks, and everything will be checked all the time. Um, where we are, what we do, how long we are, and somewhere, what we spend, and for, for how much and for what, etc. And actually, we will see that we are locked in a cage with invisible digital bars, but it will be a cage nevertheless. And uh, yeah, I had to think of this song of um, Janis Joplin titled Freedom is just another word for nothing left to lose. This will be the situation that. that the world will end up with you will just have nothing else to lose that's it and uh, that's of course not real freedom um, the great reset will be a great disaster and we know this because the bible tells us so and because and you will see the bible speaks a lot about this it will be new new norm new uh, a new world a new world order and uh, in that it connects with the sentiment of the people. People want something new all the time. For decades we have been conditioned to always want new things. All the commercials, the whole modern Western society uh, at least, uh, has always been uh, pressed to new, new things. Replace whatever you have and get the new model, get the new uh, things. And it's still going on because even in this situation that we are now, people uh, are lining up to get the new uh, iPhone or the new um, whatever uh, gadget it may be. And um, we see uh, also other things like um, uh, we have uh, two genders. Well, there's only two. For thousands of years we had only two genders. Now, now we want new things. We, we have invented dozens of other genders. And um, all this old stuff, it's boring for this generation, we want new things all the time. And um, now it will be coming. It will be totally new. Uh, it will be new normal, new money, a new world order, and it will be not what people thought it would be. It will not be nice. So, the question is, what is wrong with old? And the question is, what is wrong with new? So I want to look first at what is what what is, what is wrong with old, and then we're going to look what is wrong with new, and and how this uh, this will work out. And uh, so I first want to go to Deuteronomy uh, chapter thirty-two, verse four through seven, because <laughs> as uh, the Bible wisely says, there's nothing new under the sun. Uh, this uh, longing for new things, for these changes, uh, is something that um, it's part of man's nature, I, I guess. Deuteronomy 32, verse 4. And it begins with, he is the rock. Now, this is interesting. Uh, it speaks here about Jesus, obviously, the rock. It's also capitalized in most Bibles. Um, and we are here just in the very beginning of our Bible. But it speaks about Jesus. Talking about old and new. <laughs> he is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity. Just and right is he. They have corrupted themselves. 
talking about the people. Their spot is not the spot of his children. They are a perverse and crooked generation. Do you thus requite the Lord, O foolish people and unwise? Is not uh, he thy father that had brought thee, bought thee? Uh, had he not made thee and established thee? And here it comes. Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father and he will show you. Ask your elders and they will tell you. This is such a simple uh, but profound uh, advice. Remember the days of old. Did we always have 33 genders? We didn't. Did we miss the other 31? No, we didn't. Uh, did we always be godless? No, we weren't. Was it good? Yes, it was good that we were not godless. And so why? Why change? Remember the days of old. Ask your father. But you see, people now want to erase history, want to erase all these memories. Uh, old people, they are actually uh, old school. They, we don't listen to them. This is over. This is past. We move forward. That's what they think. They're actually moving downward. Um, the Proverbs um, speaks about this in different ways. The Proverbs uh, chapter 12, in verse 15, it says, The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. So this this connects with what we just read. Hearken to the council. Ask the elders. Ask the previous. Look at the previous generations. <clears throat> but if you don't, you're foolish. If you think that you know better and uh, your way is right, then uh, yeah, you might uh, get a very uh, nasty surprise. And always in also in chapter 14, verse 12, we know this verse very well. There is a way which seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof uh, are the ways of death. This is the thing. It seems right. The way we are going seems right to many people. The Great Reset. This is the smart thing to do. This is the right thing to do. Um, but it will lead to death. As uh, we read in uh, Deuteronomy, uh, he is the rock. His work is perfect. His ways are perfect. <clears throat> if it is perfect, this, this means you can't improve it. It's already perfect. So who are we to, to say, no, we don't need this. We're going to do it differently. This is destined uh, to, to go wrong. And uh, my favorite verse, uh, one of them at least, um, and certainly uh, today, uh, is Jeremiah 6, verse 16. And because it shows this, uh, this image that you can have before you in the midst of all this. Um, Jeremiah 6, verse 16. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways, or on the crossroad, other translation says, and see. And ask for the old paths. We read this before. Where is the good way? Ask, where is the good way? And walk therein. And what is the result? You shall find rest for your soul. This is what we need. Um, but then it says, but they said, we will not walk therein. This is the problem. And, and so it, this is the Lord speaking. And he says, he says, just, just stand on the crossroad and look around you and consider. Eh? Eh. Ask the old generations, ask your, your fathers, and um, see which way is right, and walk in that way, because it is right. Don't try something new, because you know the right way, you can know it. Now many people will say, uh, it's all nice, these verses that you read, but this is the Old Testament, and we don't want old, we want new. We want new things. This is old stuff, this is past. Um, and then I would say, well, really? Um, let's then go to the New Testament. And, and people even say it, that the God, the God of the Old Testament, we don't like this God. We, we like the God of the New Testament. The, 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 um, Jesus who said, uh, it's, it's all a matter of love. This is this, this new age idea of, um, 
of God and of Jesus. But it's not what the Bible says. In uh, Matthew 5, verse um, 17, Jesus says, uh, Think not that I'm come to destroy the law or the prophets. So we just read from the law, Deuteronomy, and from the prophets, Solomon and uh, Jeremiah. Jesus says, I did not come to destroy it. I came, and uh, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. So he is actually ful fulfilling that. These words are not old. They are, well, they are old, but they are still valid. Um, the, he's basically saying, there's no great reset. There's a great fulfillment, but not a great reset. It's not going to happen. And, um, and then in, in verse 18, he makes it even stronger. He says, For verily I say unto you, until heaven and earth pass, one yacht or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law until all be fulfilled. <coughs> he doesn't say here that things will never change, by the way. He says, until heaven and earth um, pass. And that will happen. We get that there will be a great reset. God will do a great reset eventually. But it will not happen until all be fulfilled, he says. And it's not, not now, not yet. So the Bible actually tells us we should stick with the old. We should stick with that which has been proven to be good. That which God ordained. That of which God said in Genesis 1, it is good. And in the end he even says it is very good. When God says it is good, who are we to change it? Who are we to say it's not good, we want something better? Uh, but that is, that is the, the spirit of this world. We want to change everything. Uh, nature that God created, is, well, most people, uh, well, many people don't believe God created, but nature is not good, we have to change it. We have to make genetic modifications to, make, to improve it. Uh, that is the idea. But it's not what the Bible teaches us. So, to answer the question, what is wrong with old? Nothing. <laughs> if it is the, that old which God ordained and created, nothing is wrong with it, and we should stick with it. It has proven to be right. So, there's no, no uh, reason to, to do differently. Now, you can also ask yourself, then, what is wrong with new? It's looking at it from the other side. Well, nothing is wrong with new either. If it is God who renews things, if it's God who renews your heart, that's good. <coughs> but our new, the new that human introduces, um, is not really new. And um, the, the new that Satan introduces is not really new. It is um, usually a, a different version, a perverted version, I would say, of the old. Uh, so this new world order is not new. It's, it's, it's not new. It's a perverted world order, a twisted way, one, a changed one. And uh, what we read in the beginning from Deuteronomy 32, verse 5, uh, it says there, uh, they are a perverse and crooked generation. That is what it is. It's perverted. And so if new is perverted... Uh, or, or crooked version of the old, then everything is wrong with it. So, what is wrong with new? Well, the new that we talk about here, the new that Satan brings, the new that people come up with, everything is wrong with it. Because it goes against God. It defies that which God created and that of which God said, it is good. So, let's go to another verse that... Uh, Solomon wrote in uh, Ecclesiastes, uh, chapter 1, verse 15. Um, it says there, That which is crooked cannot be made straight, and that which is wanting cannot be numbered. So that which is crooked cannot be made straight. So, what is he speaking about, is the question. Well, you back up one verse and you get the context. He says there, I have seen all the works that are done under the sun. And behold, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. He's talking about the works done under the sun. And these are the works of men uh, that are done under the sun. So, And they are all crooked. 
they are all crooked, and he says they cannot be made straight. So everything we do, we do as mankind, it's actually crooked. It's it's twisted, and it cannot be made right. It cannot be made straight. And so the great reset is not going to fix it. Um, we're going to make things worse, actually. Now I want to briefly look at this word uh, crooked. I wrote it down here. So there is uh, two uh, Hebrew words that are used for uh, crooked. The first one is uh, avat, which means uh, to bend or to wrong or to cheat. So it's also it's a verb also. Eh? Um, it's often in the Hebrew language you have the same word as verb and as uh, noun. So it, to cheat someone else, to, uh, it's it's crooked, or to pervert. And um, the second word is uh, patal, and patal uh, means to twist. It's also as a verb you use it when, for example, someone uh, has something in his hands and you want it, you grab it and you twist. You, you twist so that he has to, to let go. And this twisting, this is, this is the same word, patal, this is crooked. So um, we know, of course, crooked and twisted as a synonym. But it, you can have this picture. You take something with force from someone else in, a, in an unfair way. You take it away from him. And uh, uh, that's, that's crooked. So the word, English word crooked is a bit old-fashioned word, I, I guess. Um, but this is what it means. It's, it's really twisted and it is perverted. It is unfair also. Uh, that's why it also uh, is used for uh, cheating in the Hebrew language. And we find it a lot in um, in scripture, this word, uh, in different contexts, but uh, always around this theme. And uh, in particular in the Psalms and in Proverbs, it uh, is speaking often about the crooked ways of man. It is part of our human nature, this crookedness. This, uh, it's, it's, it's also wicked, of course, um, in that context. Um, we find it in uh, the book of Job, when he speaks about the serpent, the crooked serpent. And, and we know this. He began to introduce man to, uh, to these, uh, these twisted ways. And then in Isaiah it speaks of uh, crooked places and crooked paths. Um, and uh, even further in uh, the New Testament, Philippians 2, we'll read it in a second, it speaks of a crooked nation. And a crooked nation uh, is what we live in today. Uh, well, whatever nation you live, <laughs> they're all crooked. Nations are crooked and their leaders are crooked. And uh, actually, uh, specifically for the US at this moment, an election is not going to change it. Um, you can choose between uh, the elephant or the donkey, the blue or the red, or whatever uh, two uh, sides you have. Uh, it's choosing between crooked and crooked. Uh, there's no difference. Um, nations are crooked, the leaders are crooked, because the people are crooked. Uh, this is what it is. And uh, as Solomon says, what is crooked cannot be made straight. It's just not going to happen. And the instruction that we have as Christians is also not to even try to make things straight. This is not our commission. And um, now let's go to Philippians uh, 15. Uh, sorry, 2, verse 15, um, there we see this. It says there, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. So he doesn't say try to change this, this uh, crooked nation. No, it says, be blameless and harmless, sons of God, without rebuke shine as lights in the world. That is what you ought to do. Not to try to change the world is not going to happen. Uh, again, it cannot be made straight. That is not our job. God will deal with that, but we should just obey Him and um, be as lights in this world. What we can influence is other people. We cannot change uh, nations, but we can bring about the change in people 
she reflected the light of God on them. Uh, this crookedness in the in the world it began when Adam listened to Eve instead of to God. We often say it began when Eve listened to the serpent, but actually the crookedness in human nature began when Adam listened to Eve instead of listening to God. He was at that moment in a position to correct Eve and things would be would be right. But he didn't. And and so there it went off and this uh, this uh, order that God had said was now disturbed and the relationship between man and God was perverted. It was now twisted. And what Adam made crooked could not be made straight by man. <coughs> Sin came into the world by man, but it could not be taken out. <coughs> and so this world is crooked, it's broken, it's twisted. And, and, and so is our nature. And because of that, we cannot make it straight. We will always... Um, put patches on broken things and the patches in itself will create new problems and, and so it will remain. Now you can say, well, if that is so, the world is broken, our nature is broken and we cannot do anything to make it straight, then actually is there any hope? Well, yes, there is. Um, I already mentioned God can make things straight and He supplies what is lacking when we can't. Um, he sent Jesus, and Jesus came into this crooked world and began to make things straight. And he doesn't make things straight all at once, um, not, not now uh, at least, but as we as individually continue to walk with him, he straightens out our path before us. Um, and he, he helps us to pass these points that that we cannot straighten, and we could not pass otherwise. Um, and he, he does not undo everything. Sometimes crookedness on our path remains, and he just lifts us over it to the other side. Uh, he does not fix the whole world, but he is with those that, that um, submit to him. Um, he straightens it enough so that we can continue our walk with him. And uh, even along the way, he gives us sometimes extra blessings. And so the world remains crooked and wicked and broken, but people can be healed and can walk with the Lord. So, still, it's God doing it. And still the question could be, is there nothing that we can do ourselves? Um, is it all only in God's hands? Well, not exactly. Um, we go to Isaiah. Isaiah 40, verse uh, 3. <coughs> also a very famous uh, verse. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. So, you think this is a contradiction? Solomon just wrote, what is crooked cannot be made straight, and here Isaiah says, the crooked shall be made straight. Interesting. He speaks here about prepare the way of the Lord. Now, for us, okay, we can imagine this, this, words, this metaphor that he uses, but in ancient days, in, in Isaiah's days, and, and before and also, by the way, long thereafter, this was a very well-known concept when a king um, would travel from one place to the other, he would also always send a party ahead of it, of him, to prepare the way, to remove all the obstacles from the roads, to take away the, the boulders and the fallen trees and even create new paths where there were no paths before to prepare the way so that afterwards the king could um, travel the distance without um, running into obstacles. And, and uh, many roads and passages that we have today, uh, especially here in Europe and in the Middle East, 
they uh, they find their existence in this that there were in the past rulers and kings that uh, that prepared those ways uh, especially here in um, western europe there are many roads passages that um, were made by uh, by napoleon well not personally but under his uh, rulership because he needed these roads so that he could afterwards travel with his armies obviously to other places to conquer um, and then we have many older roads and paths and passages that were made by the romans long before that um, so the concept of preparing the way is is not uh, strange certainly not in the ancient uh, mindset but you would do this not for a regular person you would do this for a king and so when Isaiah says prepare the way for the Lord, he is referring to a king. And uh, that is why this verse from Isaiah is quoted um, in the Gospels, in Matthew 3 and in Luke 3, um, with regards to John the Baptist. He is the one crying in the wilderness, preparing the way for the king. And so I want to read this from uh, Luke, because we get to the point uh, of what can we do? This is where I want to go with this. Um, Luke uh, 3, verse 3. And he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Speaking here about John the Baptist. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be mountain and hills shall be brought low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough way shall be made smooth so it's literally what we just read from Isaiah and all flesh shall see the salvation of God that is what John the Baptist was preparing he was preaching repentance because repentance has to come first people have to to turn away from the crooked way that they are on but what will come after that is the salvation of God the salvation of God, the Yeshua, the Yahshua, the Shua, the salvation of Yahweh. So it literally says there, if it would be in Hebrew, all flesh shall see Yeshua. Then said he to the multitude of that came forth to be baptized of him, O generation of vipers, saying you are a crooked generation, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance. Again, it has to begin with repentance. And begin not to say within yourselves, we have Abram, our father. It's ironic that um, John the Baptist comes with this, because that's exactly what the, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, would say to Jesus. Our fa Abram is our father. And he will then say, uh, you're not uh, of Abram, you're of your father the devil. Um, John continues here, For I say to you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abram. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Every tree therefore which bringeth forth, bringeth not forth good fruit, is hewn down and cast into the fire. And he's talking about the fruit of repentance. And then it continues, because then later in verse 10 the people ask, What can we do? And that's the question that we have now before us. When we read that uh, crooked cannot be made straight and that only God can do this, then the question is, what can we do? And so what does uh, John uh, answer them? Uh, he continues in the verse 12, 13, 14. He's uh, speaking, uh, he's giving some very practical examples. He says uh, to the tax collectors, you should not ask more than, um, than, you, than required. Uh, in other words, don't be corrupt. This is part of human nature, being corrupt, trying to get more than you deserve or than you're uh, allowed to. Uh, to the soldiers, he says, uh, not to intimidate people and not to abuse their power, falsely accuse them. So, um, abusing power, it's something we see also on all levels in uh, society, that people abuse their power, their position. So, what is he saying, in other words? You make straight the things in your own life that you have in your own hands. This is what you have to do. You have to begin with yourself. You have to repent. And that is what you can do. Um, 
Now the interesting thing, if we go back to Isaiah, where the, the context of these words, to prepare the way for the Lord to come, this, it's a prophecy. And the prophecy does not say that the king will not come when, the, when we have not straightened the path. That's not what it says. He will come, and he will come at the appointed time. Whether or not we have straightened our own crookedness will determine whether we will receive wrath or reward. And so preparing the way is not because otherwise Jesus can't come. It is, it is for our sake, for our destiny. And that is, that is the message that John the Baptist gives. You have to repent and you have to show fruits of repentance. repentance. Because otherwise the axe is already at the tree. Otherwise the tree will be cut and thrown into the fire. That is, uh, that is the difference. So, we cannot change the crookedness of the world, but through God's power, by His Holy Spirit, we can straighten our own paths. We can, if we truly repent and desire to walk in His ways, He will also make it possible for us to do so. And uh, that is our responsibility. And it's, of course, for our own sakes, but it's also for others. Because because of that, because we change our ways, because we, we will become different than the majority, we will shine as lights in this crooked world, as we read from Philippians 2, verse 15. And as, by the way, Jesus also says in Matthew 5, in verse 14, uh, you are the light of the world. You should not be uh, hidden, but shine as a city on a hill. So yes, we can prepare the way and we have to do it in our own lives. It's not a matter of being philanthropic or being a great uh, name in the evangelistic world or something like that. It's, it's actually very small. And in that it becomes big. This crooked world is destined for destruction. Crooked men that do not uh, straighten their own path, personally, they are destined for wrath. And, uh, of course, we know also that there will be a period of rest during the millennium. Um, but, what Solomon wrote, it remains what is crooked cannot be made straight. Even during the millennium, uh, crookedness remains and man, at the end of it, will rebel again. And uh, then, after that, everything is accomplished. As Jesus says, when everything is accomplished, when heaven and earth will pass, then, then things will change. That is the great reset that God will bring about. And uh, that is what we read in uh, Revelation 21. In the first uh, verse, where it says... And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Because the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. That is, that is what you can call a great reset. That is truly a great reset. The earth, heaven and earth will pass. And in verse um, 4 it says then again, um, All the former things are passed away. It's not something that man can do, it's not something that kings can do, that prophets can do, that presidents can do, that priests can do, none of that. Only God can do that, is what it says in verse 5. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. He that sat on the throne, no one else. And the question is, when that happens, where will you be? Those whose paths have not been straightened, will not be partakers of this. Revelation 22, verse 15, it says, For without or outside are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. That last uh, clause includes uh, many, many, many people. The others you can uh, maybe debate. Uh, um, Although, okay, but the last one. So, um, if your, your personal path has not been straightened, if you have not prepared the way in your heart for the king to enter in, then 
then there there is uh, there's nothing then you will be outside and you must choose and you must choose also today um, things are going very fast very fast um, we hardly know and understand what we have today but we certainly do not know what we will have tomorrow um, and destruction will come suddenly as we read in the letter to the Thessalonians it will come suddenly uh, there is no no warning although on the other side there are many signs but for those that have eyes to see but the destruction will come suddenly so I want to go back to the uh, verse in Jeremiah um, where it says uh, stand at the crossroads this is really something we have to do and, and like the picture um, to literally stand in these crossroads and look into these different directions these different paths and ask for the old ways and we have the answers we have it so it's not a mystery ask for the old ways ask for the way that is good and then the most important thing walk in it Amen.